Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about the city and state capital of the state of Durango, which is also called Durango. Durango was established as a city in 1563 by a Spanish captain named Francisco de Ibarra. The city was built next to a mountain called Sierra del Mercado, which the Spanish thought was a silver mine, but it actually was filled with iron. But it turns out, if you're trying to conquer a continent, iron is very important. So Durango became a very important city in the new Spanish Empire. For us, the cheapest way to get to Durango was to fly out of Tijuana. To do that, we used the CBX, which stands for Cross Border Express Bridge. The CBX bridge costs $30 round trip and it will allow you to cross from San Diego Cedro to the California side directly to the Tijuana airport on the Mexican side. AJ is at the official border crossing. No. Now you step. Now you're stepping over both at the official border crossing. Like my yep. So it's been beneath those. Just right there. There you go. That's the official border crossing. The airline we chose to get to Durango was Volaris, which isn't the greatest airline, but they're not the worst either. We arrived in Durango early in the morning, and you need to know that Durango is a desert city. And so it was very cold in the morning, so you need to make sure that you're a little bit bundled up if you're gonna walk out onto that tarmac. After that, we went and got a taxi. The taxi cost 300 pesos, which I think was a little bit high and we might have gotten ripped off, but at least the sunrise was very beautiful over the desert. For our hotel, we picked the beautiful Posada San Agustin, which is a very affordable, beautiful mansion right in the middle of downtown. Unfortunately, it is a historical building, and so, as you will see, there are no elevators. So, we had to walk up and down the stairs to get to our room, but it wasn't that bad. Okay, so this is the junior suite. It has two beds. It has Nice bathroom, refrigerator. Even when I turn on my light. Yeah. Your video is not gonna. Little kitchenette area. And a nice jacuzzi tub and a shower. So that should be good. After checking out the room, we took a quick nap. But then after the nap, we were up again and we were looking for our, our almuerzo, which is lunch, which is the largest meal of the day. And so we started to explore the city of Durango walking down the streets. This is a monument here to Dolores Del Rio, who is a famous movie actress here in Mexico. She has filmed many films here. There's a list of like 20 films that she's filmed here in Durango. Apparently, Dolores Del Rio had a house here. And this is it. It looks like it's a restaurant now, but this was Dolores Del Rio's house here in Durango. Interesting. Oh, she was born here. Okay. So Dolores Del Rio was born here in Durango, it says. We just learned that. Over here is the legislative palace for the state of Durango. And it is just on the corner of Pancho Villa's mansion right there. That's Pancho Villa's mansion on the left here. This is where Pancho Villa headquartered the country briefly during the revolution. Yeah, and if you ever want to get a dual perspective on Mexicans and Americans, ask a Mexican how they feel about Pancho Villa and ask an American how they feel or what they know yes. about Pancho Villa. Definitely different. Totally, he changes personalities completely as soon as you cross the border. Yep. We are in the museum now, and what we are looking at here is a letter um, from Manuela Amayala Calderon to her son Juan Jose Zimbrano. And Juan Jose Zimbrano was apparently the first viceroy here of Durango. And so there's a map up there of the area of where, how it was founded. They have a sword here. It looks like the story is that they conquered the area, the old conquistadores store. This is kind of interesting. These are revolutionary 
war items here. You have some cannonballs. Looks like they were using Colt 45s. But the rifles are interesting because these are German rifles. So they had some influence from Germany in there. So that's very interesting that they had German rifles there. Some revolutionary coins here and Porfirio Diaz's sword. From 1910. And here's some money from 1914. Got a one, a five, a 10, and a 20. All with the same faces. Down here in this room, we're in a store area. This used to be a store area here, and this used to be used to make tobacco down there. That's why it's so humid. Up on the wall here, they have some famous photos. You have Pancho Villa on the left as governor. And then over here, this is when Pancho Villa and Zapata stormed Mexico, the presidential palace, and the famous picture of Pancho Villa sitting in the presidential chair. These murals in the upper palace here are by Francisco Montoya in 1950. And then you have the first governor up in the top right corner over there. So this part of the palace here was kind of like a pawn shop. So if you couldn't pay a debt, you would leave off something valuable like your plates or your silverware or your shoes, cups, until you could pay it back. But that's how you would pay debt here in Mexico back in the beginning. So when Pancho Villa was the governor, he would come here and he would talk to people. Anybody could come in through that door over there. And if it was during his office hours, you could come in and talk to Pancho Villa and ask him anything you wanted. So that's what people would do. So this room here is just talking about all the governors of Durango. That's a Spanish governor. And then you just go around, there were some generals there. You go around to more modern times to the actual governor who doesn't have a plaque on there, so I can't say his name. Jose? Jose? Jose Razas Gay? Jose Razas Espur. In this book here looks like the original constitution of the state of Durango in 1863. That's what this document, and then over there is a revised version. This little cove here is done by Luis Sandoval. He's talking about Benito Juarez. And over here to the left is a story from when Mexico won over France. You can see that they took the French flag down and what they wanted to do is they wanted to take that carriage and they wanted to ride over, they wanted to take the carriage and ride over the French flag. But when Benito Juarez saw what they were doing with the French flag, he picked it up and he said, respect to foreign governments is peace. So even though they won against France, they wanted to respect France. So they did not trample over the French flag. So this monument here is celebrating 450 years of the founding of Durango as a city. So Durango as a city has been here for 450 years and this was the church where it was founded at and we're here in the Foundation Plaza, aptly named. Over there is the cathedral. Pretty big. The cathedral in Durango is beautiful, but it was while we were walking by the cathedral so the ages AJ shoe had a apart. shoe blow out so that's what we do apparently is we go on vacations and we buy shoes so we're gonna buy AJ one of these nice pink ones right now uh, he picked the black one out <laughs> okay $15 later AJ's got his shoe situation back in order again so looks like they're good again we're in the market area here, lots of different things. There's lots of shoes, lots of food, and just 
the church in the back. And we're trying to find the entrance to the main market. So we'll see how it goes from there. We were looking for the Mercado Ex Cuartel de Juarez, which means the ex headquarters of Juarez, which is supposedly where his soldiers stayed before. Well, we are now in the market here. And we will like slowly from here get to know where we need to go. It's just a maze of places here. There was over 500 stalls in this market and you could find anything that you wanted. Movies, flowers, food. Even in a moment you're gonna see like the saint of death in here. Just basically anything that you needed or wanted, it was in this market. Got um, a haircut, and as Brooke Shield would say, happiness always. I think it was pretty good, 45 pesos, so about two dollars for a haircut. I think it came out pretty good. Now we are at a little stand in the market, and we're gonna try some gorditas, which is typical um, food for Durango. So a gordita is like a stuffed taco. So we'll try that. So we're having egg and opales, and we have another one. That is beans and cheese that AJ didn't want. He was already full. He had a subway. They had a subway, but this is more traditional. Fue muy rico. Okay. You gotta make sure it's fresh. Thank you, sir. All right, the sign says yes, they have commando boots there. So they're selling the commando boots and regular boots and more boots. There's just a ton of boots here to sell. After we had our gorditas, AJ and Denise went back to the hotel. But I had a little bit room for something a little bit extra. And that little bit extra was scorpions. Yep, scorpions are the pride and joy of Durango. And if you want scorpions in Durango, there is one place in particular that you have to go, and that is the market of Gomez Palacios. At the Gomez Palacio market, you will find scorpions in every shape, size, and color. Whatever you want, you will find it, plus a few artistry things and a few a local delicacies. Lots of leather work included as well. Work. In addition to the scorpions. This is kind of cool. Lots of different flowers here. Very picturesque here. So we are going to try a scorpion taco. And there's with the pincer and everything. Looks like it's been fried. And we'll see how it tastes. I don't know. It's protein, right? So I'm eating my um, scorpion here. And to be honest, it really doesn't taste like anything. It just tastes like skin. It reminds me of the crickets that they sell in Puebla. It's got a meaty interior in it, so that's pretty good. It's actually not that bad at all. Looking at the insides, like meaty. The rest of the taco that I have here is just cheese and lettuce, so it's pretty good. Nothing really big deal. Eating scorpions and Durango. The reality is scorpions isn't really something that people eat all the time. It's just kind of a novelty thing. The thing that people really like to eat in Durango are caldos, which are soups, but we'll get to that in another video. Here are some Mexican gambling machines. You can do a few coins of gambling here in Mexico. So that's how they gamble here. Lots of herbs here. Lots of teas that they make, different food. This video is kind of getting long, so I think I'm going to leave you here in the market. I hope you enjoyed this first part of Durango. There's so much more to explore in Durango. I hope you continue on. Please subscribe and you'll learn more about Durango. We're going to go to the city museum in the next video and I'm going to take you around the plaza. And in other videos, we're going to talk more about food 
and culture. There's so much more to see in Durango. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like if you did, and we'll see you in the next video.